What's up y'all, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna be staining a butcher block countertop that I plan on using for a DIY standing desk that I'm gonna put in my YouTube studio slash office space. Um, before we get into it, I actually picked this block up from Home Depot. Um, it is the Hardwood Reflections brand and the species of wood is birch. Um, just so you had that info. But one thing I wanna call out, which I couldn't find you know, much talk about, is this board comes out really smooth, right? Um, and I was wondering what sandpaper to buy and I bought like several different, you know, grades of sandpaper. Um, but come to find out on Hardwood Reflections website, they actually sand all of their butcher block countertops down to 150 grit. So with that being said, that's as smooth as you're gonna get and then you can actually just do, um, you can use 220 grit to get it even smoother. So that's what we're gonna start off by doing now. <laughs> all right, but before we get into the sanding, I wanna go ahead and walk you through some of the products that I'll be using to stain this board. So I'm using all Verithane products, and um, first we've got our pre-stained wood conditioner. Now from the research I've done, the knowledge I've gathered, for this particular species of wood, which is birch again, it's a hard wood, so it's not necessarily required for something like this, but on softer woods, like um, I think like typically like pine or something like that, you can use this. And I feel like it's one of those steps that like it's not gonna hurt to do it, so I'm gonna do it anyway. And basically all it does is just help the wood take the stain more evenly, so you don't get really blotchy looks. For example, well actually stain, this is a piece of cheap um, plywood that I bought from Home Depot so I could test out the different colors. And I did stain this, uh, put the conditioner on it, but that's the early American. That's a provincial, I think that's dark walnut. Either way, I'm going with this one, but we'll see how different it looks on the actual birch wood. But I just wanted to test it out just to see what it looked like visually. Um, we've also got Verithane Classic Wood Stain in the early American color. Now, um, I mentioned classic because again, my Home Depot only really had this classic version. There's like a fast drying version as well and I've heard you have to be very careful with that one because it needs to be wiped off almost immediately because it stains really quick. But hopefully the classic one is a little more generous with us, but we'll see. All right, and I've got lastly, the triple thick polyurethane. This is water-based and apparently it dries a lot quicker. So we're gonna use that. And uh, this is in the clear satin, and it's the only one they had at Home Depot, so we're gonna go with that. Um, I also got a few other things over here. We've got some wiping cloths to get the stain off, some gloves, because you don't want to get stain on your hands, and some tack cloths to get the uh, sand off, well, the dust off when I'm sanding it down, right? All right, and some, I will be applying all these different products with a foam brush applicator. I just felt like, that might be better for me. You could use a staining pad. Um, I know they have like staining cloths as well. I just wanted to use the foam brush, so hopefully that goes well. And I heard it kind of applies a little bit thicker and it's a little bit easy to get in certain little, you know, areas of the wood, so hopefully that works out. But like I said, we're gonna go ahead and start staining this with the 220 grit sandpaper. I will do the top and the sides. Um, I may go ahead and flip it over and sand it as well while I'm doing that on the on the top side. This is the actual B side, they call it, or the bottom, which has all the different divots in the wood and whatnot, imperfections. I kind of like it though, but we're gonna start with the bottom and see how it goes. So let's start sanding. Okay, let's get to sanding. We use, again, we're using the 220 grit sandpaper, so this is gonna be real smooth when we're finished. All right. And always remember to go with the grain of the wood. All right. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing this mask, it's because I'm paranoid. I probably don't need it in this step. But when I was staining that piece of plywood I showed you earlier, I was only in here for like maybe 20 minutes, in and out, in between trying to let it dry. And my head was hurting from the fumes alone. So maybe I'm a little bit more sensitive to it, you know?
All right, using the tack cloth right now to get all the sand dust or sawdust off. Okay, there's that. All right, and now we're gonna get our pre-stained wood conditioner. Be sure to always stir these things, you know, when you're doing it. Um, and this right here, I'm gonna have to wear the mask because this stuff is kind of strong. All right, yes, just be sure to stir it. And I think we're gonna leave this on for like 15 minutes, I believe. Oh, 30 minutes it says. So we're gonna leave it on for 30 minutes and we'll come back and we'll do our stain, okay? All right. So we've gotten our dust off with the tack cloth and now we're gonna apply the uh, coat of uh, pre-conditioner, pre-stain conditioner. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll soak it really good. Remember, go with the grain. It may not be as important right now, but with the stain, definitely. But as a precaution, go with the grain. Okay, so now that we've got the uh, pre-stained wood conditioner applied, like I said, gonna give this 30 minutes to dry and we'll come back and we'll put on the first coat of stain, all right? All right, guys, we are back. and just wanna give you a look at the wood after the pre-stained um, conditioner. And it uh, looks pretty good, but we're gonna go ahead and apply the wood stain now, the first coat, so. But like I said, just wanna give you a look at it. We're gonna go ahead and stain, so let's get started. All right, so we're back guys. Now we're gonna go ahead and apply the uh, early American wood stain. Uh, the conditioner has now dried. And um, before I'm gonna actually, uh, before I apply the wood stain, I'm going to actually stir it thoroughly, okay? Uh, make sure you always do that because usually there's some stuff in the bottom that kind of just sits. You just wanna make sure you stir it really, really good so you can get an even application of the stain. All right. So I've stirred up the stain and we're gonna go ahead and apply it right now. Uh, let's do this here, see how it looks. Remember, always go with the grain. Go ahead and soak it really well. Um, I'm gonna start with the top and then finish off with the sides here. I'm gonna go ahead and stain the entire thing. I've seen some people work in sections of the board, but with this classic, like I mentioned earlier, I don't think it's gonna be as bad as the fast drying. So hopefully, all right, no turning back now. All right. Stretch that stain out over it. I'm trying to just go back over and get as much of it out of the brush as I can. Notice I'm going with the grain. I'm trying to take my time here, but also trying to get as, you know, get through as much of the board as possible so I can wipe it off and in hopes get a more even coat, you know? I'm gonna run back down it. Okay.
I'm liking this foam brush so far. It does apply, but just be aware that like, it applies kind of thick. Well, not, not super thick, but it looks like you might not have a lot on the brush, when in actuality you do. So that's why you see me going back over it several times with the grain, just trying to even out those strokes to prevent any like, you know, darker areas in the board. Oh, with the grain. Caught myself there with the grain. See one stroke right there, pretty much coated the entire, that entire little area right there. So again, this is the bottom part of the board or tabletop, which I recommend doing because if you mess it up, nobody's gonna see it anyway, you know? So that way you don't really have to worry as much about it. Again, you wanna do the best you can anyway because you don't wanna mess it up, but you know what I mean. Again, just trying to get this good to go. Now, I'm gonna run through and do the sides. Probably don't need as much here, but oh well, it'll be all right. Again, a drop cloth is necessary here because I'm getting stained all over the floor. And then on the side of this board, it's good to have this foam brush because you can really, really, you know, get in there into those grooves on the side of the board that look a little bit kind of harder to get into. Okay. Make sure I don't step on any of this stain. It's dropping here. Okay. Now we finished with our first coat of stain. And I think, how long has it been sitting here? Let me check. Scrub off. It's been about three minutes or so. Probably. Looks a lot darker in the image than it does in uh, real life. I'm gonna give it like 10 minutes or so. All right, now we're gonna wipe the stain off. I was shaking the rag out because I noticed that there was quite a bit of uh, like lint. So that's something you might wanna keep in mind. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's looking good. Make sure I get it right, hold on. Oh man, I think I might only need one coat. If that's the case, yeah, this is looking pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy already. So remember, go with the grain so you don't get a lot of these wiping marks, like kind of streaks that you see in a lot of people's 
uh, tables, trying to prevent that if at all possible. Right, so just wipe, we're wiping away. That's all we're doing. Huh. Okay, I think that's about, oh, it's wiping more into it now. Yeah, I thought, when I was watching videos online, I thought you might need a, a clean cloth every time. But really you don't. Because once you get it, you know, you wipe some of it off, sure a little bit might go back onto your board, but from what I'm looking at here, it doesn't appear to make much of a difference because it gives you that, you kind of have like more of a weather type look, if you know what I mean. So, all right, this is looking good. Let me make sure I got most of this off. Now, the one thing I don't like is, as you may expect, there's quite a bit of like stain underneath, which is technically the top side of the board. And I don't like that. But I mean, I guess you can't really do much about it, right? But, I still think the top looks pretty good. It's got the look that I was going for. Now the question is, do I want to go darker? That I'm not sure of yet. I don't really have the best lighting in here, so I'm not quite sure yet. But now we let it sit. That's the first coat of stain. Now I'm gonna let this dry for about two hours. And I think I'm just gonna sit on this and then you know, try the, uh, decide if after two hours of drying, then I have a better idea what the stain would look like once it's kind of finished and set in and whether or not I would like to, you know, apply a second coat. But right now I'm liking the look. So we'll be back in two hours, I guess. All right, just a quick once over um, before it actually dries. I actually like the B side. I like the imperfections. And again, this is one coat of early American stain. I think I might just stay with one coat. All right, now we're gonna repeat the same steps that we did on the underside of the board, on the top. Um, I've got a couple like drip lines here that, uh, it's probably gonna leave a mark, but hey, I guess that happens. Depending on how this look, I might end up using the B side anyway, but let's go ahead and sand with the 220 grit sanding paper. Okay, so now we're gonna remove all that uh, dust from the sanding with the tack cloth. Okay, so now we're gonna apply a free stain wood conditioner. Um, I've already stirred this thoroughly, so remember to always do that. And here we go.
All right, guys, so we're back. I um, uh, apologize because my camera actually stopped recording when I was staining and removing the stain, but we're back. It's been two hours. This is the top side of the board, and it's dried. So I'm probably going to flip this over and start by um, applying the polyurethane to the bottom side that we stained in the first half of the video. But I just wanted to show you what it looked like here, and I'm pleased with the results. Um, you got a nice, you know, natural wood looking finish over it. It actually looks a little bit, uh, the camera picks it up, I think, relatively accurate, but the lighting in this room is not the, or in the garage is not the best. But just wanted to show you what it looked like. All right, guys, so I'm over here about to stir the triple thick polyurethane water base, and this is in clear satin. Um, I just wanted to show you, look how thick it is. It is like really, really thick, so. This should be interesting applying it to the board. So we'll see how this works out. But I just wanted to show you the consistency of it because it's a lot different from the normal polyurethanes you might see online. Um, but uh, it's supposed to only require one coat because this is essentially three coats of your normal polyurethane and it takes, so it's cutting down the size of the job, you know? So we'll see how this works. Just want to show you that here. We'll apply in a second. Whew. All right, guys, we're back. So um, I finished the bottom side of the board. I've applied the uh, triple thick polyurethane. Um, it's been about 24 hours. It's dried. I've sanded it down so it's nice and smooth. But before I flip this over and do the top half and finish it off with the polyurethane, I just want to talk about that, the application of the triple thick poly and how it went for me. Because I saw a lot of people when I was watching videos online, they were talking about you know, issues they had with the triple thick poly, like um, they saw streaks in the application, they saw bubbles in it, um, and they, uh, they said they was rough to touch after uh, it had dried. Now I can attest to all those things, so I'll talk about each one individually. As far as the streaks in it, um, I did see some streaks in the actual, you know, once it dried, but it was very minimal. I will say that like, if you're doing it, and I'll probably record the, the application at the top and I'll try to, you know, be a little better about it, but you can definitely see streaks at the end of the board and in the middle. So what I was doing is I was trying to get just a little bit on the brush because it is really thick and just kind of go as long as you can. You're supposed to go the entire length of your, whatever you're staying, um, applying it to. But once I got to the middle of the board, I kind of ran out, had to dip again and place it in there. So what I will say is that you can definitely see more streaks whenever you start or stop, you know, like if you have to start here and then you stop here to put some more down, you can see streaks. So to kind of combat that, I kind of figured that would be the issue, is I kind of tried to go back over it and thin it out as much as possible. So that's that. Um, and once it dried at two hours, you could see it. If you go back and look at this, whenever, if you do this project yourself, if you go back and look at it at two hours, I'm just gonna tell you, you're probably gonna be disappointed because you're gonna see a lot of streaks. But after 24 hours of drying, I will say this, I can barely see any streaks on the table. Um, so I will say it did a good job of drying after 24 hours. I let it sit that way too because I used the oil-based stain and this is a water-based poly and I was reading that you should give it you know, 24 hours. So I did. Um, now, that's that. As far as the bubbles, I saw one bubble, like one very small one in the table that was it. Not a big deal at all. Um, and then as far as it being rough to touch, was it rough? Yes, you can feel it after you applied it. But now that I've sanded this with the 220 grit sandpaper, it is, I would say, pretty smooth. There are certain areas in this the bottom half where it feels a little rough, but it's smooth, but you still have that like natural wood feeling, if you know what I mean. So I will say that all of those issues, I think really depend on 
how much poly you apply on your brush, how much you put on the brush, and then how you apply it. So just remember, like, just get a little bit on the brush and try to, you know, do long strokes. So I just wanted to mention that because I honestly was a little bit nervous about applying it too. But in the end, would I recommend the triple thick polyurethane? Absolutely, because I would not want to do this process. I think a lot of people apply three coats of like normal poly and then you have to wait a couple hours in between each one of those coats and then do the same thing on the other side. Nah, I wouldn't want to do that. That's too much time, you know, waiting and have to do the same process three times when I could just use the triple thick. And all of those issues seem to kind of you know, solve themselves after the thing sits for like 24 hours and you kind of, you know, do your final sanding on the top to smooth it out. So I think it's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this board over, apply the final coat of triple thick poly to the top side and we should be done with this. We'll let it dry and we should be good to go. All right, and we're back. Um, I decided to not record the last step of applying the poly to the other side of the butcher block just because it's the same exact thing and I just wanted to go ahead and get this, uh, in the house and set up. So just want to give you a quick look at it. I think it turned out pretty well. Um, like I said, I've stained it, sealed it. You know, everything looks pretty good. So I'm happy with the results. If you have any questions at all about any steps during this process, um, just comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. Um, I thank all of you for watching. Please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.